so hello and welcome to our new series um, where we meet some of our customers who have been through a transformation journey. Uh, today we're meeting with uh, Jim Azek, um, Head of Transformation of Commonwealth Superannuation Corporation, or commonly known as uh, CSC. Uh, CSC is Australia's premier super fund for government and defence force employees. Uh, Gemma is responsible for the rollout of Salesforce that has been, uh, I think, short of a transformational story for CSC. Uh, Gemma, thank you for being here with me and sharing some of your story. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, let's start with a little bit of fun, Gemma, if that's okay with you. Um, I'm really curious to understand uh, if CSC Salesforce implementation had a, had a theme song, what would it be? <laughs> ah, look, I think we could probably have different songs for different parts of the journey. Um, if you ask me how I'm feeling right now, it's probably I'm Still Standing <laughs> by Elton John. <laughs> uh, we are still transforming. It is a long journey. Um, but it's probably, you know, something like Eye of the Tiger. You've really got to be in for the fight when you when you go into a transformational journey. It's it's um yeah, it's not an easy thing to do, but it's it's very rewarding. That resilience is certainly a common theme uh, with consultants, but also with customers. You know, you cannot go through this type of projects without that level of resilience uh, and passion, but also understanding where you want to go. Um, Gemma, could you tell us a little bit more about CSC and, and the Salesforce journey? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we, you know, we've been engaging with Salesforce to some degree for the, the better part of probably four or five years. Um, but really our implementation journey started with them around three years ago. Um, we undertook a sort of a procurement exercise. We knew we needed a, um, a couple of capabilities. We went out for a bundled procurement. So we were looking for a CRM capability, uh, a new digital portal for our customers. And we were also looking at that time for a new identity and authentication provider and um, a correspondence uh, management provider. So we, we sort of undertook a big procurement. We bundled that up through a implementation uh, partner to provide those services, which was Visio, who, who uh, won that procurement. Um, and Salesforce was selected for both the CRM component and the digital portal component. Um, so that was, yeah, approximately uh, three years ago. Fantastic. Um... And, and more specifically, could you share a little bit more about why CSC selected Salesforce as, as a solution? Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, I think, you know, there's a number of things. It's obviously a, you know, a strong and well-known product, but really for us, it came down to sort of key, uh, two key things. Um, it was the ability to select a product that would enable us to rationalize and sort of consolidate a number of capabilities that we had in many disparate systems into a single sort of enterprise grade uh, platform. So that ability to reduce complexity um, and reduce integration effort was definitely um, a key a key to selecting the product and, and what it could offer us over time in terms of new capabilities. Uh, the other the other thing that was a really strong factor was implementation uh, and implementation experience. So, you know, anyone that's been around really any project knows that, uh, you know, you can select the best product in the world, but if you don't implement it well, um, you're sort of in a world of hurt. So we sort of knew going in that we really wanted strong experience in implementation to ensure that we would get a partner that could guide us and ensure that we were on the wrong right track to get the outcomes we needed. Thank you. And and so you're now pretty much more a little bit more over three years down the track of that transformation project. Uh, may I ask that question? How is everything going? Yeah, it's going, it's going pretty well. Um yeah, three years, it's a bit crazy. <laughs> uh, we really sort of shifted now. Uh, we sort of had our program bro broken up into a couple of components and it, one of those was what we called the engagement program and that's really where the Salesforce piece fit in. Um, and that program has now shifted from sort of foundational delivery into continuous improvement. Um, so all of the foundations have been delivered so that 
that includes the CRM, which gave us our sort of 360 degree view of our customers um, and sort of consolidated all of that customer account level data. Um, we've also implemented our digital portal, which was really significant that enabled us to consolidate seven portals into a single portal. So um, that was a, a really big activity. It also solved uh, one of our key customer pain points at the time, which was uh, identity. So the ability to log on easily with all these modern functions like SMS, um, we sort of, we didn't have any of that. So that's been a huge uplift for us. Um, where we're at now is really turning our attention to exploiting the capabilities that are that are available through Salesforce. There's just so many. Um, so for us, it's about, well, how do we leverage the capability that's there? So things like digitizing our services and, and you know, really making the most of that investment. So it sounds like it's the, the common journey of a lot of customers, starting with a big project at the beginning and a big shift and transformational shift. And at some point you shift into... How do we get more with what we have? Uh, seems to be the common theme now, which is quite common across uh, a lot of the customers. In, in, I'm interested to understand, uh, Gemma, from your perspective, like how do you measure the success of that project? And did you even measure the success of that project, in fact? Um, yeah, look, we did, of course. We had a business case um, and, you know, a number of things that we we sort of needed to hold ourselves accountable to. Uh, and they are things like rationalising licensing costs, um, you know, by consolidating onto certain platforms. So there's all those sort of uh, operational measures that we, we've we sort of uh, looked at. It is something we're be getting better at now on the ground as we're making sort of decisions in a more iterative way about what we deliver and the impact of those. Uh, but some of the things that we've measured, for example, is sort of, you know, um, feedback, complaint trends, so obviously we had some pain points with the log on experience and we've seen, um, you know, a, a decrease in those over time since the portal's gone live. Um, usage of the portal. Um, so we have more customers using the portal today than we did uh, prior to consolidating and providing that new platform. So that really, really sort of uh, shows that that we're getting the value out of that. Um, yeah, and we've also sort of, we have, implemented quite a few functions that enable self-service now where customers previously had to call or email to get access to certain documents they can now do that themselves so so we can measure those sorts of things so they're very tangible benefits for both the customers i guess because they get access to the information when they want it and, and i'm assuming they want the information typically at night or early in the morning and and this type of things absolutely you talked a lot about <laughs> um, tangible benefits of course in terms of you know efficiencies internally, you know, and not having to service everyone over the phone and provide documents over the phone. So that that's all very tangible. I'm interested to understand, were there any cultural changes or, or any intangible benefits by going through a program of work like this? Um, yeah, absolutely. Look, for us, you know, this wasn't implementing a, a new platform. It wasn't a technology program that was, let's put in a great product. Uh, for us, it started from the perspective of really changing the way we work and looking at an end-to-end -end transformation across our people, our processes, our technology and our data. So, you know, we really looked at, we had quite a, well, we had and we still do because we, we are still going through um, sort of building out these new processes, but quite fragmented ways of operating where information and processes were split across multiple teams, they were split across multiple uh, systems and therefore it's sort of you know how do we how do we create a seamless experience for the customer that provides sort of straight through and cut through to get them to the outcome that they want so you know for us we really stepped back and we created I guess a, a servicing architecture if you call it that um, that enabled us to guide that implementation so that we weren't just sort of implementing a product that had a number of sort of features. And so, Gemma, your role is head of transformation, which means a lot, but also not a lot for some people. Can you tell us a little bit more about what, what do you do? What's your role there today? And how do you go from, you know, putting together a big project to shift into continuous improvement? Like, what do you do every day, Gemma? Uh, look, the way you describe it is a lot and not a lot is probably a really good way to describe it because I think it is a role where you have to be 
what the program needs at that particular time and the needs of you know of leading a program like this have changed over the last three years so um, very early on it was about um, you know painting the picture painting the vision selling that to the organization creating that sense of urgency building the case for change um, really really getting the organization behind what we were about to embark on um, because people are such a big um, piece of transformation and, and we weren't just after you know implementing some new capabilities we wanted to change the hearts and minds of people so it was a big big piece around that in the early days um, the other piece that was ob obviously very important was building the capability to execute. Um, so really looking at, well, how do we actually build a team that is capable internally and, uh, you know, to work heavily with our partners um, to actually execute on something of this size. So we sort of we sort of had to build it from a team of five people to up to probably 60 or 70 at one point um, to be able to execute on this on this program of work. Today, it's more about supporting and enabling teams to drive the change themselves and also ensuring that we have an operating model and a capability that can now effectively support these modern platforms in a continuous improvement way into the future. So it's much more operationally focused today than it was a couple of years ago. <laughs> Mm. which to some extent is a little bit easier from a change management perspective when you operationalize all those processes and those releases. Um, so obviously that's a three-year journey, which is quite a long time, but sometimes goes goes very fast. Uh, typically, in my experience, when you start uh, a program of work like this one, and I've been you know, sitting in the same chair as you, you know, a number of years ago, um, you start with that vision, you start with that idyllic view of how the project will be delivered and how it will unfold. But there's always twists and turns during the project. Can you tell us a little bit more about some of those hard moments and some of those things that were unexpected, I guess, along the way? Yeah, uh, look, plenty of those. <laughs> um, look, some of the things I think, you know, that sort of trip you up along the way is, is genuinely the people side of things. I think that is the most important part of transformation. But it's also also the part that when you've got so much on, when the going gets tough and the to-do lists just keep growing, it's it's the piece that often drops off. <laughs> and so for us, you know, definitely ensuring that you are bringing people along for the journey, you're constantly communicating. I think we found the times where where we got tripped up was because we we didn't put that at the forefront. We got focused on the doing. Um, and not thinking about, um, you know, what that was going to mean when it hit the other side of the fence. So, uh, you know, I think for me that is probably the biggest lesson um, that you you can't sort of do that right at the start of the program and think that everyone's going to be fine because they've heard the message once. Um, you really have to come at the change management piece from all angles, all levels and constantly. And I'm interested to understand in your experience. So you're telling me that you know, obviously, that change should have we should have put a little bit more emphasis on on change management overall. That that is a recurring theme for a lot of implementations where people think they selected the product, they they focus a lot on making sure the product does what it's supposed to do, and tend to leave the rest a little bit on the side, uh, and then potentially leads to a fail implementation. Why do you think overall businesses? And, and agencies think that way, think about the solution more than how to conduct the change? Well, look, why? I'm not sure, but I, I think we're all guilty of it. I know I've sat in plenty of product demonstrations where you see a great product and a great demo and you think that's just going to solve my problems. Let's just get that. Um, and you think you could just put that in and, and that's it. It's a silver bullet, um, but it's absolutely not. <laughs> Uh, people will make or break your change. Um, and if if they're not brought along for the journey, they don't understand why you're doing it, why you need to change, what are the outcomes that you're trying to achieve by this change, then, you know, we've had situations in the past and programs in the past where we've delivered a, a very modern, capable platform and people just refuse to use it because they just didn't want to use it or... They don't understand why they have to use it. So you really, you really do need to explain and sell 
where it is you're going from and to and why. And from your perspective, who are the best people um, to deliver that message and that change management? Oh, it has to be led from the top. It has to absolutely be led from the top and leadership is so important. Um, I think another pitfall some organisations make is they assume that they can bring in, you know, a consultancy or some big external party to just run the entire transformation. And, you know, I certainly, my experience has been that that, that won't give you the best results. They can absolutely support and bring great capability and expertise really people within the organisation need to own the change themselves. So it needs to be led right from the top. So for us, it was our CEO. He was in front of this change from day one. The same with our executives. We ran programs um, across our, our sort of senior leadership uh, around change management, around the vision, where we're going, so they could lead that with their teams. Um, and it was still hard. It was still hard. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I think you've really, really got to invest in that and know where you're going and your people have to be able to speak to that with passion. Yeah, so owning the change is an important piece and 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 I have to admit that's music to my ear. That's certainly an advice that I would give to a lot of customers is you can ask us to help. We're happy to give you some advice. But at the end of the day, if it doesn't come from your heart, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so that passion absolutely. is something, something <laughs> absolutely important. Um. I want to ask you a little bit more of a personal question now, Gemma. Uh, you know, going through a project like this one for, you know, a large organizations like CSC, you know, 100 years old organization as well. Uh, it's pretty remarkable and it's great that you've been able to be successful. What, what does it mean to you personally? Well, look, I'm a customer. I am a customer of CSC. My my superannuation is with CSC, so I'm I'm very personally affected <laughs> by the by the transformation. And uh, I did have, you know, one of um, the moments that I can recall over this sort of last three or so year journey was when we did put that new digital portal in. Um, I I was able to sort of go home and log on on my own and show my show my family what we what we had delivered. Um, and that was just a really key moment because I, I am one of those people that struggled previously. I used to have to call the contact centre just to be able to reset my details to be able to log into the portal. It used to frustrate me. So um, the fact that the fact that I could do that and sort of share that with, with people um, was really cool. But the other big thing and the other thing I'm extremely grateful for with this experience was the ability to lead an end-to-end -end change. I, I do feel that's quite rare. Uh, we genuinely had the opportunity to think about things and design across people, processes, technology and data. It, it wasn't just put in this technology platform and train some people to use it. It was, you know, and it is because we, we are still transforming, but, it you know, it is about okay, well, what is the outcome we're trying to create for the customer? What's the, the easiest way to get to that outcome for the customer? Um, what does the process need to look like? And then what skills do our people need to be able to support um, that particular process? So uh, for me, the opportunity to, to step back and look at the whole system, not just uh, one piece of, of the puzzle was, was awesome. There's one thing that you mentioned, which to me absolutely clicks straight away, is that you were uh, uh, you you were immersed in that problem originally because you you you're a user, of course, of uh, uh, of CSC, and I think that is something that a lot of organizations tend to forget. They tend to solve a problem from the top, but but forget that immersion or forget to understand. You know, we need to talk to the people who actually do the work day to day to really identify that problem. I think this is a fantastic opportunity, of course, that you had to be the one saying, how come I cannot do it? I should be able to. And therefore, you create that vision. This is a fantastic opportunity. And perhaps that's a key takeaway today is immerse yourself into those problems because you will come up with better solutions, which is a typical you know, strategy or immersion process for startups to solve problems and come up with new ideas. So what, what a fantastic opportunity. Now, let's bring it back a little bit to your organization. 
where to from here for CSC? You've been through that massive journey. You're starting to more that continuous improvement journey to be able to deliver continuous value. Where to from there and what does the future look like for you? Hopefully bright. Um, <laughs> yeah, look, like I said, we, you know, we had our uh, program split into a few phases. So this particular phase is moving into continuous improvement. Uh, but we have some other really big phases that we need to deliver from a, a technology and, and platform perspective. But I guess with, with Salesforce and that journey and that continuous improvement, I think what you will see from us is, you know, how we exploit those capabilities. So how, how do we drive more customers to using the portal and self-service and making those digital capabilities available to customers so that they don't need to sort of engage with us in quite old school fashions. They absolutely can if they want to, and many customers prefer to, to sort of engage that way. We, we have um, quite a diverse customer base, but we want those options available to our customers. So I think you'll see us leveraging those more. I think you'll also probably see us uh, looking at how we can be more proactive with our customers. So how can we add more value um, to help set them up for a better retirement? We now have... Um, an ecosystem that is much more connected and integrated, which means our data is richer and we can do more with it. Um, so I think you'll see us starting to do a bit more of that into the future. Thank you, Gemma. Um, the team at Visio is always absolutely delighted to work with CSC and I can see celebration every six weeks when there's a new release and I can see the clockwork, the clockwork that's happening every week, every month. This is absolutely a fantastic story of collaboration here between consulting partners and, and, um, and customers, of course. Before we wrap up, is there anything that we didn't mention or something that you didn't mention that you would like to, um, to, to talk about? <laughs> no, I think, I think probably you just touched on, touched on one, which is, you know, partnerships. I think um, it is extremely important, important to have strong partnerships, to have culturally aligned partnerships. And I know for us, from our perspective, working with partners such as Visio and Salesforce and the others that we've worked with, it's it's having those partners that are genuinely invested in outcomes and seeing, um, you know, the, the program be successful. So, you know, for us, I think that's been a huge factor in our success to date. Well, Gemma, thank you so much for joining us today. I've really enjoyed that discussion. I uh, always enjoy this discussion around transformation and I could spend hours talking about it, to be honest, and listening as well. Uh, we always learn so much about it. Uh, thank you for joining me today again. Great. Thank you.